your ideas help move this country. You are the American Innovator. Hi, everyone. Paul Akers, and welcome back to the American Innovator. I know you don't expect to see me in my bathrobe, but, you know, I had a thought that I really wanted to talk about that I thought was so important. I'm actually down in Sun River, and yesterday I had a fantastic day on one of my wild adventures. As you know, I drive a Porsche. And I was invited by Porsche Motorsports to go down and race all their new cars, the Cayenne, the Boxster, every one of them, the 911, the 911S. And I just had a great time. I went over to Shelton, flew my plane in there, got out of the plane. The interesting thing and the funny thing is, though, the FBO, where I normally fly into, went out of business. And so I had to walk to the Porsche driving event at the racetrack, which is about a couple miles away. It was so funny to show up in a plane and then have to walk to the Porsche event. It was hysterical. Uh, people were laughing hysterically as I was laughing hysterically, but just a funny little thing that happened to me the other day. Great time though at Porsche. And then after I finished that at about 10 o'clock, I got in my plane and I flew down to Sun River to meet a great friend of mine, Sam Carpenter, worked the system. He's an author. And I've interviewed him. He's like one of the first or second people, actually about the third or fourth person that I interviewed on my radio show. If I recall, you can go back and listen to that interview. It was really a cool interview. And Sam's a great guy and a super athlete, about 63 years old. And he kicks my butt and I'm 52. And so he's a world-class skier and mountain climber. He climbs mountains all over the world and done a lot of great stuff. And I've always wanted to climb a mountain called Broken Top, which is down in central Oregon. It's a beautiful volcano that has erupted and it's got very jagged cliffs. And Sam has climbed all these mountains many, many times. And I said, will you take me up there? Because it's a little bit beyond my technical ability. And as you can see my wound here on this side of the face, I'll explain the story in a minute. So I went down to Sun River, and I know you're not expecting to see me in my bathrobe, so I just gotta tell you, it's so important. I figured, hang it, I'm just gonna do it and be a little edgy and talk to you guys about a cool thing that happened to me on this trip. So I flew down to Sun River, met Sam, we drove up to Broken Top, we got up to the trailhead about one o'clock, so I've already raced in the morning, and now we're ready to climb a 9,000 foot mountain the rest of the afternoon. So as we're going up there, we're with one of his employees and a great guy named Josh, young kid, just a really cool guy, and he asked me about flying, and he said how long I've been flying, I told him I'm flying about eight years or so, and I told him that I really regret that I waited so long to learn to fly because I learned to fly when I was, you know, about 44, 45, right in there. And I, it's just like the most magical thing in the world to be able to get in a plane and go anywhere you want without any restrictions. I call it my magic carpet. It's just an awesome experience. And I really should have learned to fly when I was like 20 and just slowly got into it as I could afford to do it. I know it's very expensive, but you know, you can join a flying club and you can do all those things relatively inexpensively if you do it through a flying club. And you don't have to fly everywhere like I do, but you work into it, but you have that repertoire of being able to say you're a pilot and fly. So I just highly recommend that. And that's a regret in my life, to be honest with you, that I waited so long to learn to fly. And I was, as I was talking to Josh, he asked me, you know, uh, are you afraid to fly? Are you nervous to fly? And the honest answer is when I get in my plane, I take it very, very seriously. I realize it has the potential to kill me and I have to be on my A game all the time. It's serious, serious business. I go through a procedure, a checklist, I have a process and I really follow that carefully. And I've been in a lot of situations where I could have killed myself actually. I've been in a lot of bad weather situations, a lot of system failures in very bad weather, IMC at night, just a lot of bad things. But I learned one incredible concept from my flight instructor, and this is what the show is about today. And I was explaining to Josh that I could reduce everything down to aviation, down to basically just two simple concepts, and the one being the most important, and the second one being very, very important and right behind it. And I said, what happens in aviation is they make it very complicated. Aviation is like, wow, how do you even learn to fly a plane? It's so complicated. All those instruments, all the communication, the navigation, everything that's going on, the weather issues and all that. And I told Josh, you know, you can just reduce everything down to aviation to just two simple concepts. And you're saying, but this show's not about aviation. Well, the, the issue is life is very simple and we talk about two second lean about all you need to do is make a two second improvement every day all you have to do is spend two minutes a day making little improvements 
And life can really start to change if you make life simple, but people don't like to make it simple. Colin Powell says, one of my favorite quotes is, there are those who simplify and there are those who complicate. Those who simplify have a real job. Those who complicate, come on. Anybody can complicate things. So let's reduce aviation down to two simple principles as we reduce continuous improvement and the lean journey down to two simple concepts, basically. Make a two-second improvement every day and learn to see waste. Okay? Here's aviation. You ready? Fly the damn plane. I told Josh, if people would just understand that when all else fails, if you just keep the wings level and maintain airspeed, you're going to be okay. But this is where everything falls apart in an airplane. And I know it's happened to me before, too. I'm not beyond any of this. But this is what my flight instructor told me. Fly the damn plane. It's that simple. I'll give you an example of what that means and how important it is to understand that concept. Uh, when I learned to fly, I read a book like I, I think it was 101 Ways to Kill Yourself in a Plane. Because I wanted to know how everybody else killed themselves in a plane so I could make sure I didn't repeat that same thing. And then after I got my plane, I fly a pretty complex, high-performance plane, a jet prop. And what happened was a guy who bought a plane and had a flight instructor fly with him uh, was taking off. It was his first flight, really, taking off by himself. His flight instructor was out of the plane now. And he's with his wife down in... Uh, down in the East Coast in one of the, big, one of the beach areas down there. And he took off and he forgot to put his fuel cap on. And when he forgot to put his fuel cap on, what happened was the plane, when he took off, it started siphoning the fuel out of the wing. And when he looked over, he noticed that fuel was coming out of the plane. Now, he was about 800, 1,000 feet off the ground. And he got all flustered and everything like that. He lost his airspeed. The plane stalled, the wing dropped, he crashed and he killed him and his wife. Fly the damn plane. The plane didn't know that the fuel cap wasn't on. The plane didn't care that the fuel cap wasn't on. The plane had two wings and an engine and everything was just fine. It could have worked perfectly, indefinitely. You know, he could have got, he had a four hour range. He would have lost a couple of gallons of fuel. This exact incident happened to me over the North Atlantic flying between Greenland and Iceland. You want to talk about pucker factor, Boy, I look out the plane and my cap fell off. It got actually sucked off because it was so cold outside, like minus 40. The, it had contracted and the seal, the metal contracted and it lost its seal and the cap pulled off. I looked out and I saw fuel coming out my wing at 28,000 feet over the North Atlantic. You want to talk about pucker factor, but I remember what my flight instructor told me. Fly the damn plane. Don't get distracted. Maintain airspeed. Keep your wings level. The plane doesn't care. I did those things, and my wife and I landed safely in Iceland. And so that is an important concept in life, and I don't want to... I don't want to go through. That's why I got my, in my robe. I just said, you know, this is really important. And Josh and Sam, both after our 12-hour hike or 11-hour or 12-mile hike, and it was seven hours long, 9,000 foot. You're seeing the pictures of it now. It was an, an amazing hike. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But they were saying, boy, you know, that was a really good concept, fly the damn plane. Well, I can't take credit for any of it. It's all John Mariani. John Mariani is the one that taught me that. As most of all the great things in my life, I stand on the shoulder of other great people that have taught me all these powerful concepts that I like to share on The American Innovator because I learn from other people that teach me cool stuff. And, and John taught me that concept, and I have never forgot it. It's such a cool concept. And so that is the paradigm in life. Life is not that complicated. Aviation, a seemingly complicated subject, can be reduced down to basically two simple principles, which I haven't told you the second one. The first one is, what is it? Say it out loud. Fly the damn plane. And the second one is, weather will kill you. You got to be careful of weather. Weather is out there and weather is way more powerful than you or the plane. So if you pay attention to that and you don't try to think you're better than the weather, aviation can be an awesome thing that you can enjoy through an entire duration, an entire lifetime. You just got to be careful of those two things. So that's a little bit of wisdom or, or concepts that I wanted to impart to you guys today. So anyways, we flew up or we flew down to Sun River. I flew down to Sun River, met Sam, hiked up Broken Top, spectacular views, spectacular hike, and the mountain was just off the charts. 
But this is the important concept that I want to go back to. So we got all the way up to the top. We had gone 9,000 feet. I was 300 feet from the summit. And it became very, very steep. I mean, extremely steep. Right at the very top, it went straight up. And we had to do some rock climbing, which I'm trained in. I, you know, I know how to do all that. But I was tired. I'm 52 years old. I'm not a super athlete. I'm a good athlete, but I'm not the athlete that Sam was. And Sam really wanted to make it all the way up. We had a thunderstorm coming in, weather. And it was at the end of the day. It was about 5.15 when we reached the summit. And I knew we had to go all the way back down, which is at least about another three hours, two to three hours going back down. And I just started thinking, all these things are stacking up against me. And I said, I'm not going to make it to the summit. I don't care. What I care about is that I return safely. And this is another important concept in aviation is having good judgment, knowing when not to go, as they'll tell you. You know, if things don't, if you don't feel good, the plane has one mechanical problem or a, a little bit of a, a problem, the weather's not good, you're tired, you have, start having these things stack up against you, you want to say no. And so in this instance, I said no, and I had wounded myself right here. I, I hit a tree branch and I scraped my face pretty bad. I don't know, I just had some things, I just didn't feel right about it. So Sam and Josh continued up, and Sam really wanted me to go, and I probably could have made it with no problem, but I made the judgment call to come back down. And I came right down the center, down, uh, down the fall line. It was a beautiful descent down, and I have no regrets because that's another important concept is having good judgment when things don't feel right to you, being able to say no, not feeling like you have to get there or you have to make it. And it's an important concept in aviation. You know, you fly the damn plane, you watch out for weather, and you know when to say no. And important concepts, and I implemented that concept yesterday when I hiked this mountain because I just didn't want to take a chance. I'll go up in another day when everything lines up and I feel a lot better about it. But for now, I walked away with just one wound on my face right there, and I feel pretty good, and we had a great hike and great exercise. Hopefully this helped you today on The American Innovator. I always like to share the best concepts that I've learned that really make my life more full. You have a great week. We'll see you next week on The American Innovator, and I promise next time I won't be in my bathroom. Bye. American Innovator has been brought to you by FastCap. To hear more, just go to theamericaninnovator.com. Innovator.com.